All right, Julia Anto here with Elite FTS, one of the coaches um, on the team. We have David here with us today. David is part of our powerlifting team. Um, he's been on the team for the last year or so. Looking at his structure, what I want you guys to notice here as we go over his deadlift is he is very much in anterior pelvic tilt and a lot of you guys have been talking about this a lot lately and how to correct that not just from a uh, a physique standpoint because we, we know there's no way we're going to be able to change his actual structure but we can make him more efficient in that position in a better position based on how we know he's already structurally standing so we can notice that big anterior tilt now what i'm gonna have david do is i'm having give me about two or three reps deadlifting here he pulls sumo so we're going to work on that today we're going to look at what those things we're seeing and then i'm going to show you a few things on how we can actually correct that so as he gets into his position okay we're kind of noticing a hard extension okay go ahead good give me another one Good, okay, relax. Now, he's probably thinking really hard about what he's doing because when we actually see David deadlift, especially as he gets towards those higher uh, percentages, towards his max, we see those um, deficiencies really pop out and he kind of starts to go back to bad, uh, bad habits. So what we're gonna have David do is when he gets down to grab the bar, we want to be able to find a position. If we're in too much extension, okay, the hamstrings connecting to um, way up high there near the glute, we're actually stretching those hamstrings really far, which is gonna make it really difficult to then get a lot of force out of the bottom. So we need to be able to give those hamstrings a little bit of, of looseness down there. So as David goes down to grab the bar, what I'm gonna have him do is grab the bar, don't pull, Okay, get some tension and slack out of the bar. Hold your position. Now, as he's going, I want to, he already corrected it. Okay, right there, he's gonna tip his pelvis under a little bit. Then he's gonna pull and go, go. There we go, good. Okay, relax. Now, stand up. I want you to do that again, same thing. I want you to go down in your normal position. As you grab the bar, we're gonna take that pelvis and tip it under a little bit. He's gonna correct. You can see he's already shaking in that position because his body doesn't like being there. So now we're also noticing his adductors are having to fire a little bit, um, a little bit more as well. So this is something that we've been working on with David over a long period of time. Now, what is going to correct that anterior pelvic tilt is not only some glute activation, but it's also gonna come from his lower abdominals. And this is something that we've been working with him for a really long time um, with. So if you have somebody that's having a difficult time getting into that position um, or understanding where that pelvis needs to be. You can take a band here. We got this from a buddy of ours, Trevor Jaffe, a couple weeks ago. Um, give them something to pull against. So this band is gonna pull him into extension. This is gonna give him the cue that he's actually gonna have to take that pelvis and tip it under. So go ahead, grab the bar. His initial reaction is gonna be to arch up, but we're gonna take that pelvis under and then drive. Go, good and relax. Now, one of the ultimate goals that everyone talks about or thinks about in their mind in a sumo deadlift is a vertical shin. It's not the end all be all. In a structure build like David has, a lot of times we feel or hear the terminology, the deadlift has to be scraping up your shins. That's maintaining a proper position and putting you in the most efficient position. With this structure, that's not necessarily the case. Okay, so when we set up for a deadlift, when you are short and stubby like David with shorter arms that don't extend very long, we actually could potentially get a better torso angle if we allow the bar to be a little bit further away from us. What this is gonna allow us to do is it will give him more room and clearance to get that tuck or that uh, posterior pelvic tilt a little bit but it'll also allow him to get more of an upright torso angle so he can maintain that position, he can recruit more quad getting off the floor, and the entire movement can be more efficient. So I want you to take just a hair of a step back so that you have a little bit of clearance. Now I want you to set up the same way that Julia had you set up. I'm gonna grab that band just so I can tactile cue you again. And from the side, we wanna notice here that bar position. So as he goes down to grab the bar, we're gonna be looking at where his shoulders are in relation to the bar. And we're gonna see that he's gonna be in a little bit better position as opposed to having his shoulders more forward. Don't Talk pull it pelvis. in. Yep. Now drive. Good. Good, he was still in down. a little bit of anterior tilt. So I'm gonna have him go ahead and do one more. 
Doesn't matter if you don't need a band. I'm trying to band this way. Good. Pull under. Yes. Now go. There we go. Much better position. Uh, better ability to get a little more upright and actually drive with his quads a little more. If you think about where our muscles attach, every time we move, if we're out of position, we're asking a muscle to work at a length, at a different length, because its attachment point has been modified. Um, so we knew that for the left hamstring and left adductor, when you ask a long muscle that's 